King Herod, having crept by the favour of the Romans into the Jewish monarchy, married Marianne, a granddaughter to Hyrcanus, the rightful king and priest. And for her, besides her high blood being of singular beauty, he repudiated Doris, his former wife, by whom he had children. This Marianne had a brother called Aristobulus, and next to him and Hyrcanus, his grandfather, Herod, in his wife's right, had the best title. Therefore, to remove them, he charged Hyrcanus with treason and put him to death, and drowned Aristobulus under colour of sport. Alexandra, daughter to Hyrcanus and mother to Aristobulus, accused him for their deaths before Mark Antony. So when Herod was forced to go answer this accusation at Rome, he left the custody of his wife, Mariam, to Josephus, his uncle, that had married his sister, Salome, and out of a violent affection, unwilling that any should enjoy her after him, he left strict and private commandment that if he was slain, Mariam should be put to death. But, Marianne returned, but Herod returned with much honour, yet found Mariam extremely discontented to whom Joseph has had, meaning it for the best to prove Herod loved her, revealed his charge. So by Salome's accusation, Herod put Joseph to death, but was reconciled to Marianne, who still bare the death of her relatives exceeding hardly. In this meantime, Herod was again necessarily to revisit Rome, for Caesar having overthrown Antony, Herod's great friend, was likely to make an alteration to Herod's fortune. In his absence, news came to Jerusalem that Caesar had put Herod to death. Their willingness it should be so, together with the likelihood, gave this rumour exceeding good credit.
public voice run on to censor Julius Caesar for deceit. Because he wept when Pompey's life was gone, yet when he lived, he thought his name too great. But now I do recant, and Roman lord excused to rash a judgment in a woman, my sex pleads pardon, pardon then affords. Mistaking is with us but too, too common. Now do I find, by self-experience taught, one object yields both grief and joy. Caesar wept when on Pompey's worth he thought, but joyed that slaughter did his foe destroy. So at Pompey's death, Caesar's eyes, true drops did rain. Whom dead, he did not wish alive again. When Herod lived, that now is done to death, Oft I have wished that I from him were free, oft I have wished that he might lose his breath, oft I have wished his carcass dead to see. Then rage and scorn that put my love to flight, that love which once on him was firmly set. Hate hid his true affection from my sight and kept my heart from paying him his debt. But blame me not, for Herod's jealousy had power even constancy itself to change. For he, by barring me from liberty, to shun my ranging, taught me first to range. But yet too chaste a scholar was my heart to learn to love another than my lord. To leave his love, my lessons form apart, I quickly learned that other I abhorred. But now his death to memory doth call the tender love that he to Marianne bear, and mine to him. This makes those rivers fall, on which by another thought unmoistened are, for Aristobulus, my brother, a youth that ever did in angel's shape appear. The cruel Herod was not moved to ruth. Then why grieves Marianne Herod's death to hear? Why joy I not the tongue, no more shall speak that yielded forth my brother's latest doom. Both youth and beauty might thy fury break, and both in him did ill befit a tomb. And her thee grant, sire, ill did he requite his high ascent alone by thee procured, unless he murdered thee to free the sprite which still he thought on earth too long immured. How happy was it that so heinous mind was moved to pity my distressed estate. Might Herod's life a trusty servant find, my death to his had been unseparate. These thoughts have power his death to make me bear. Nay more, to wish the news may firmly hold. Yet cannot this repulse some falling tear that will against my will some grief unfold, and more I owe him for his love to me, the deepest love that ever yet was seen. Yet I had rather much a milkmaid be than be the monarch of Judea's queen. Was for naught but love, he wished his end might to my death the forerunner prove. Yet I had rather still be foe than friend to him that saves for hate and kills for love.
My marrying doth mistake. The news we heard did tell the tyrant's end. What? Think this thou for thy brother's murderer's sake? Will any one it to Herod spend? My curse pursue his breathless trunk and spirit. Face me by the damned easel's heir. Must he, ere Jacob's child, the plan inherit? Must he, vile wretch, be set on David's chair? No. David's soul within the bosom placed of our forefather Abraham was ashamed to see his seat with such a toad disgrace. That seat that had by Judah's waist been made. Thank you. 
very polite. The boy is sleeping the first of the fairies to sleep, and then the mask is I on the mask's cheek, and that without comparison did do. The beauty and the both of them makes it like, and thus distracted, either's beauty of might within the other's excellence was drowned. Too much delighted bear him from delight, for either's love the others did confound. Where had thy poor creature only gone, his life from Herod Antony would have taken. He would have loved thee, and thee alone, and left the brown Egyptian clean forsaken. And Cleopatra pretend to be so firm a lover of her wayment face to seek. Then both Mark Antony's for we have not seen by her that fled to have him hold the chase. Yet for the hours of last. 
Oh, blessed Arabia, the best climate place, I by the fruit of the century of the tree. Tis not in vain thy happy name, thy house. All Arabians like Soleil speak. Had not my fate been too, too contrary, when our Constabarus as did guess Soleil's have been object to my eye, whose looks and personage must all eyes amaze. But now, ill-fated Salome, thy tongue to Constabarus by itself is tough. I accept I do the evil wrong. I cannot be the fair Arabian girl. What childish lips are these? Why spend I now an unlawful points? It is long ago since shame was written on my tongue and brow, and certain tis shame is honest though. Had I upon my reputation stood, had I affected an unspotted love, Joseph as his veins had still been stuffed with blood, and I to him had lived for so quiet. Then had I never cast an eye of love on Constabarus's now detested face. Then had I kept my thoughts without the need, and blushed in the motion of Elisa's way. But shame is gone, and honour wiped away, and impudency on my forehead sits, and she bids me work my will without delay, and for my will I will employ my wits. He loves. I love. What then can be the cause keeps me from being the Arabian's wife? It is the principles of Moses' laws, for Constabas still remains in life. If he did bear as earnest hate as I to him, for him there are an ease. A separating girl might free his fate from such a yoke that did so much displease. Why should such privilege to man be given? or given to him? Why barred from women? Are men the more eager to go to heaven? Or cannot women hate as well? I'll be the custom breaker and begin to show my sex the way to freedom's door. And <laughs> with an offer will I purge my sin. The law has made the norm to our courts. If Herod has lived, I might hear him accuse my prison. Such for the future sake, then would I tell the king that he would refuse the son of Phallus in his power to take. But now I must divorce him from my bed, that my fair Soleus may possess his room. Had I not spent his love, he had been dead. I curse my tongue the hero of his doom. But then my wandering heart to him was fast. Nor did I dream of change. Soleus said he would be here. And see, he comes at last. Had I not named him, long had he stayed. Well, found, fair Salome, Judea's pride. Hath thy native wisdom found a way to make Soleus deem him deified by gaining thee a more than precious prey? I have devised the best I can devise, and more imperfect means was never found. But what cares Salome? It does suffice if I am heavens by their enemies to be crowned. In this our land, we have an ancient use, committed first by our lawgiver's head, who hates his wife, though for no just abuse, may with a bill divorce her from his bed. But in this custom, women are not free, yet I for once will rest it. Blame not thou the ill I do, since what I do is for thee. Though others blame, Soleus should allow. Fix Salome, Soleus hath a tongue to censure her fair actions. Let my blood be that my proper brow, for such a wrong by being yours can make even vices good. Arabia, joy, prepare thy earth with green, thy never happy work indeed till now. Now shall thy ground be trod by beauty's queen. Her foot is destined to depress thy brow. Thou shalt, fair Salome, command as much as if the royal ornament were thine. The weakness of Arabia's king is such. The kingdom is not his so much as mine. Tis not the glory on the love except. Judea, as we honest worthy still, had not affection in my bosom crept. 
my native country should my life deplore. Were not Soleil's he with who I go, I would not change my Palestine for very much less a glorious state to show go far to purchase an Arabian to Far be it from Soleil, so to think. I know it is thy gratitude requites the love that is within me and shall not shrink. Till death do sever me from earth's delight. <coughs> the twist! Methinks the wolf is an art of walk. Be gone, Soleil. Who doth here arrive? Tis Constabarus that doth here walk. I'll find some quarrel here for me to draw. Farewell. But were it not for thy command, in his despite, Soleil's here would stand. Oh, Salome, how you wrong your name, your race, your country, and your husband most. A stranger's private conference is shame. I blush for you at having your blushing lost. Oft have I seen, seen you to my grief consorted with this base Arabian here. Heaven knows you have been my comfort chief. Then do not now my greater plague appear. Now, by the stately carved edifice that on Mount Sion makes so fair a show, and by the altar fit for sacrifice, I love thee more than thou thyself dost know. Oft with a silent sorrow have I heard her look to day as mouth doth censure thee, and did I not thine honour much regard? Thou should not be upbraided thus by me. Didst thou but know the worth of honest fame? And how much a virtuous woman is esteemed, thou once I can should deserve a shame to be both chaste and chastely deemed. Our wise prince did say, and true he said, a virtuous woman crowns her husband's head. Did I for this not wear thy lower state? Did I for this requite or beg thy life, which thou hast forfeited to hapless fate? To me, to such a thankless wretch the wife. This hand of mine hath lifted up thy head, which many a day ago has fallen full low. Because the son of Babas is nothing, to me thou dost both love and fortune owe. You have to my patience often exercised. Use makes my collar keep within the banks. Yet boast no more but be by me advised. A benefit upgraded forfeits thanks. My pretty Salome, dismiss this mood. Thou dost not know how ill it fits thy place. My words are all intended for thy good, to raise thine honour and to stop disgrace. And to stop disgrace? Take thou no care for me, nay, do thy worst, thy worst, I set not by. No shame of mine is like to light on thee. Thy love and admonitions I defy. Thou shalt no other longer call me wife. Thy jealousy procures my hate so deep. I move from thee to free my life. By divorcing Bill before I sleep. Are Hebrew women now transformed to men? Why do not as well our backers fight and wear our armour? Suffer this and then let the world be topsy turvy to white. Let fishes graze, beasts swim, and birds descend. Let fire burn downwards while the earth aspires. Let winter's heat and summer's cold offend. Let thistles grow on vines and grapes on briars. Set us to spin also, or at best make us wood hewers, water bearing whites. From sacred service let us take no rest, and use us as Joshua did the Gibbonites. Hold on your talk till it be time to end. For me, I am resolved it shall be so. For though I am first that to this course do bend, I shall not be the last, for well I know. Why then, be witness heaven, the judge of sins. Be witness spirits that eschew the dark. Be witness angels, witness cherubims, whose semblance sits upon the holy ark. Be witness, earth, witness, Palestine, witness, David's city, if my heart did ever merit such an act of thine, or if the fault be mine that makes us part. Since my this Moses' friend unto the Lord did work his wonders in the land of Ham, and sooth firstborn babes without a sword inside where I'll beat the holy land, till now that fourteen hundred years have passed since that first law hath been in force. You are the first and will I hope be last that ever sought her husband a divorce. I mean not to be led by precedent. My will shall be to me instead of law. I fear me not you're too late to repent you have ever lived so void of all. This is Soleil's stuff that makes you thus reverse your order. You must next be his. But if my thoughts are right for cause disgust, in gaining you, he gains no lasting bliss. 
Mr. Nesbitt. And not long ago, Joseph has then was Constable Barras now. When you became my friend, you proved his foe, and now, as for him, you break to me your vow. If once I loved you, greater is your debt, for certain it is you deserve it not. An undeserved love we soon forget, therefore that to me can be no blot. But now, fair ill, my once beloved lord, yet never more beloved than now a fault.
since love can teach us blood and kindred school. What booty this, but he did raise my head to be his round co-pot and a kingdom's mate. With all, he kept Rafina from my bed, more wished by me than thrice to dare state. Oh, could not he be skillful judge in love, that doted so upon his Mariana's face? He for his passion did Doris remove. I needed not a lawful wife displace. It could not be but he had power to judge, but he who never grudged a kingdom share this well-known happiness to me did grudge, and met their interview without compare. For though the diadem on Marianne's head cropped the vulgar judgments, I should boast Grafina's brow was white, her cheeks as red. Move thy tongue, for silence is a sign of discontent. The weight of both our loves, too great a wrong, if this hour to find thee sadly bent. Mistake me not, my lord. Too oft have I desired this time to come with winged feet, to be enwrapped with grief when tis too nigh. You know my wishes ever yours did meet. If I be silent, it's no more but fear that I should say too little when I speak. But since you will my imperfection bear, in spite of doubt, I will my silence break. It might amaze me time my moving tongue, except I know beforehand all your mind. I have admired your affection long, and cannot yet there a reason find. Your hand hath lifted me the lowest state, the highest eminence in wondrous grace. And me, your handmaid, have you made your mate, though all but you alone do count me base. You have preserved me pure at my request, but you so weak a battle might constrain to yield to your high will. At last, at best, in my respect, a princess you disdain, and need not all these favours study crave to be requited by a simple maid. And study still, you know, will silence have, then be my cause for silence justly weighed. But study cannot boot what I requite. Unless your lowly hand may step past love, and fast obedience may remind you of I will not promise more than I can prove. Study needs not hide Rafina's smile, and I desire no greater recompense. I cannot all be in a glorious star, nor show my love in far fetched eloquence. But this, believe me, never Herod's heart tell his prince born beauty famed wife in nearer place than thou, fair virgin art. To him that holds the glory of his life. Should Herod's body leave the sepulchre and entertain the severed ghosts again, he should not be my nuptial hinderer, unless he hindered it with dying pain. Come, let us go in state, this wish and dearer time to celebrate. Submission, Caesar will forgive, and therefore, 
though the tyrant did amiss, it may fall out that you will let him live. But we have more than barely heard the news. It hath been twice confirmed. And though some tongue might be so false as with false report to views, a false report hath never lasted long. But be it so that Herod hath his life, concealment would not then wit avail. For certain it is that she that was my wife would not have set her accusation fail. Therefore now as good the venture give, and free ourselves from blot of cowardice, as to show a pitiful desire to live. For who can pity but they must despise? I yield. To necessity I yield. I dare upon this doubt engage my arm. The Herod shall again this kingdom will, and prove his death to be a false alarm. I doubt this news. But not to be my own, it is better out of course to be in terror. And rather had I, though my soul be mine, my soul shall lie and prove the true divine. Come, come, let fear go to a dust its nest, for noble courage lies within a noble breast. You royal buildings, bow your lofty side and stoop to her that is by right, your queen. Let your humility upbraid the pride of those in whom no due respect is seen. Nine times have we with trumpets haughty sound and banishing sour leaven from our taste, observed the feast that takes the fruit from ground since I, fair city, did behold thee last. So long it is since Marianne's pure cheek did rob from mine the glory, and so long since I returned my native town to seek. And with me, nothing but the sense of wrong. And thee, my boy whose birth and great it were, Yet have thy after fortunes proved what more? When thou wert born, how little did I fear thou shouldst be thrust from forth thy father's door? Art thou not Herod's right begotten son? Was not the hapless Doris Herod's wife? Yes. Ere he had the Hebrew kingdom won, I was companion to his private life. Was I not fair enough to be a queen? Why, ere thou wert to me, false heretide, my lack of beauty might as well be seen as after I had lived five years thy bride. Yet then, thine oaths came pouring like the rain, which all affirmed my face without compare. And if thou might Doris' love obtain for all the world besides, thou didst not care. Then was I young, and rich, and nobly born, and therefore worthy to be Herod's mate. Yet thou, ungrateful, cast me off with scorn when heaven's purpose raised your mean of fate. Oft I have begged for vengeance for this fact, and with dejected knees, aspiring hands, have prayed the highest power to enact the fall of her that on my trophy stands. Revenge, I have, according to my will, yet where I wish, this vengeance did not bite. I wished it should high-hearted marry and kill, but it against my will and law did fight. With thee, sweet boy, I came. I came to try if thou, for his bastards, might be placed in Herod's royal seat and dignity. But Marianne's infancy are only graced, and now for us there doth no hope remain. Yet, we will not return till Herod's end be more confirmed. Perchance, he is not slain, so glorious fortunes may my boy attend. If he live, he'll think it doth suffice to eat a Doris show such cruelty. For as he did my wretched life despise, so do I know I shall despise it die. But let him prove as natural to thee, as cruel to thy miserable mother. 
His cruelty shall not upbraided be, but in thy fortunes I his faults will smother. But now, let us retire to grieve alone, for solitary is best if it is known. human error given to every state is greater enemy to innocence. It makes us foolish, heady, rash, unjust. It makes us never try before we trust. It will confound the meaning, change the words, for it our sense of hearing much deceives. Besides, no time to judgment it affords to weigh the circumstance our ear receives. The ground of accidents it never tries, but makes us take for truth ten thousand lies. Our ears and hearts are apt to hold for good that we ourselves do most desire to be. And then we drown objections in the flood of partiality. Tis that we see that makes false rumours long with credit past, though they, like rumours, must conclude at last. The greatest part of them, prejudicate, with wishing Herod's death do hold it true. The being once deluded does not beg the credit to a better likelihood due. Those few that wish it not, the multitude do carry headlong, so they doubts conclude. They not object the weak, uncertain ground whereon they built this tale of Herod's end, whereof the author scarcely can be found, and all because their wishes that we mend. They think not of the peril that ensueth, if this should prove the contrary to truth. On this same doubt, on this so light of breath, they pawn their lives and fortunes, for they all behave them as the news of Herod's end they did of most undoubted credit call. But if their actions now do rightly hit, and commend their fortune, not their wit. Urge me no more, for fear to forsake. Not twelve hours since I married her for love. Do you think a sister's power can make a resolute decree so soon removed? Poor minds they are that honour not her face. Who hunts for honour, happiness, neglect. You might have been both the felicity and honour too in equal measure, sees. Tis not you can tell so well as I what is can make me happy or dis to match for neither beauty nor respects one mean of birth, but yet of mean of mind, a woman full of natural defects. I wonder what your eye had to find. Mine eye found loveliness, mine ear found wit, to grace the one and enchant the, the other. Grace upon her eye, and mirth upon her tongue doth sit, and looks a child in wisdom's house a mother. But say you thought her fair, as none thinks else. Knows not for all its beauty is a blast. Much like this flower, which today excels, but longer than a day it will not last. Her wit exceeds her beauty. Wit may show the way to ill as well as good, you know. But wisdom is the porter of her head, and bars all wicked words from issuing lips. But of a porter better way you sped, if she against their entrance made defence. And wherefore comes the sacred honour now? The inner word is hasty step to take Great sacrifice, are you arrived well? Ill news from holy mouth might not attend? My lips myself with peaceful tidings blessed shall utter honey to your listening ear. A word of death comes not from priestly breast. I speak of life, in life there is no fear. And for the news I did the heavens salute, and filled the temple with my thankful voice. For though that morning may not be polluted, at pleasing accidents I may rejoice. Is Herod then revived from certain death? What? Can your news restore my brother's breath? Both so and so, the king is safe and sound, and is such grace in royal season meet, that he with larger star than ever crowned, within this hour Jerusalem shall wait. I did but come to tell you once back to make preparative to sacrifice. I knew his death your hearts like mine did round, but to conceal it proved you wise. How can my joy sufficiently appear? A heavier tale did never pierce mine ear. Now Salome of happiness may boast. But now Pharoris is in danger most. I shall enjoy the comfort of my life. And I shall lose it, losing of my wife. Joy heart, for Constabara shall be slain. Grieve soul, for Grafina shall from me be taken. Smile cheeks, the fair Celeste shall be mine. Weak eyes, eyes with a child combine. Well, brother, cease your mouths. I'll undertake, on one condition, to win the king's consent. Rufina still should be in your protection, and her to you be nevertheless content. Let me know the condition, that I as quickly your command may act. 
Wait to see what herbs in Ophir grow, or that the lofty Tyrus might be set. Tis not so hard a task. It is no more but tell the king that Constabarus hid the son of Babas sent to death before. And it is no more than Constabarus. And tell him more that we are named to a our brothers there. The Herod state is that a bill our separation may be. Though loath the Constabarus is to go. The people's tell the talk. I'll go from hence, and Herod's ear the Hebrew to the face. And I that never studied eloquence, to mean with eloquence this tale to grace. This will be Constabarus' quick dispatch, which from my tongue would less a credit find. But shall we not cease without a match? Poor Mariam shall not live the father. First, jealousy, if that avail not. Fear shall be my minister to work her. Moves not Herod's ear, which doth so firm to his Marianne. She shall be charged with so horrid a crime as Herod's fear shall turn his love to hate. I'll make some swear that she desires the crime, seeks to poison him for his estate. I scorn that she should live my birth to afraid, to call me base and hungry Edomite. With patience, show her colour I betrayed, and watch the time. Be revenged by son. Now, Tom of mine, with scandal load her maid, turn hers to phantoms, Herod's eyes to flesh. But first I shall attend the royal suit, that he might earnest business may affect, and I and Marianne will keep me mute, or first some other doth her name detect. So he must tell me what the news may be that makes your eyes so full, your cheeks so blue. I know not now how to call them. Ill for me to show they are. But so I hope for you. Herod. Or oh, what of Herod? Herod lives. How lives? What, in, in some cave or forest hid? Nay, back return with honour. Caesar gives him greater grace than e'er Mark Antony did. Foretell the ruin of my family. Tell me I shall see our city burned. Tell me I shall at death disgraceful die, but tell me not that Herod is returned. Be not impatient, madam, be but mild. His love to you again will soon be bred. I will not to his love be reconciled. With solemn vows I have forsworn his bed. But you must break those vows. I'd rather break the heart of Marianne. Cursed is my fate, but speak no more to me. In vain ye speak to live with him I so profoundly hate. Great queen, you must to me your pardon give. So he must cannot now your will obey. If you command you me to silence drive, it were not to obey, but to betray. Reject and slight my speeches, mock my faith, scorn my observance, call my counsel naught. Though you regard not what Sahima saith, yet will I ever freely speak my thought. I fear ere long I shall fair marry Ansi in woeful state, and by herself. Yet for your children's sake, more temperate be. The heart by affability is won. And must I to my prison turn again? Oh, now I see I was an hypocrite. I did this morning for his death complain, and yet to do mourn because he lives a night. When I his death believed, compassion wrought, and was the umpire twixt my heart and him. Now that curtain's drawn off from my thought. Hate doth appear again with visage grim and paints the face of Herod in my heart in horrid colours and detested look. Then fear would come, but scorn doth play her part and said that scorn with fear can never brook. I know I could enchain him with a smile or lead him captive with a gentle word. I scorn my look should ever man beguile o'er the speech that what I mean afford. As Salome in vain might spend her wit, in vain might Herod's mother wet her tongue, in vain they have comforted and combined, for I could outcry them all ere long. Oh, what a shelter is mine innocence to shield me from the pangs of inward grief. Against all mishaps it is my fair defence. And to my sorrows yields a large relief. 
Let my distressed state unpitied be. Mine innocence is hope enough for me.
hail, happy city, happy in thy store, and happy that thy building such we see. More happy in the temple where we adore, but most of all, that Marianne lives in thee. If thou turned, how fair is my Marianne? How? She is well, my lord, and will an unbidden as you commanded. Muffle up thy brow, thou day's dark taper. Marianne will appear, and where she shines, we need not thy dim light. Oh, haste thy steps, rare creature, speed thy pace, and let thy presence make the day more bright and cheer the heart of heaven with thy face. It is an age since I from Marianne went. Methinks our parting was in David's days. The hours are so increased by discontent. Deep sorrow, Joshua-like, the season's days. Yet when I am with Marianne, time runs on. Her sight can make months, minutes, days, and weeks. And hours they no sooner come than gone, when in her face mine eye for wonder seeks. Rome, world commanding city, Europe's grace. Twice hath my curious eye your streets surveyed. I have seen the statues of the place which once, if not for grief, had been betrayed. I, all your Roman beauties, have beheld, and see the shows your emails did prepare. I saw the sum of what in you excelled, yet saw no miracle like Marianne there. The fair and famous Livia, Caesar's love, the world's commanding mistress did I see, whose beauties both the world and Rome approve. Then Marianne, Livia is nothing to me. Be patient, but a little while, mine eyes. Within thy compass limits be contained. That object straight should your desire suffice, from which you were so long a while restrained. How wisely Marianne hath departed the life, lest some joy my sense should suffocate. I am prepared, thou needs no longer stay. Who's there? My Marianne, more than happy fate. Oh no, it is for us. Welcome, brother. Now for a while I must my passion smother. All health and safety wait upon my lord, and may you long in prosperous fortunes live with Rome commanding Caesar at accord, and have all honours that the world can give. Oh brother, now thou speak not from my heart. No, thou hast struck a blow at heaven's love that cannot quickly from my memory part, though Saturn I did me to pardon you. What I have done, love's power constrain me do. Pardon loving thoughts, for Marianne's sake. Marianne? Where is she? Nay, I do not know, but absent use of her fair name I make. You have forgiven greater faults than this, for Constabarus, that against your will preserved the son of Babas, lives in bliss, though you commanded him the youth to kill. Go. Take a present order for his death, and let those traitors feel the worst of things. Now Salome will whine to beg his breath, but I'll be deaf to prayers, and blind to tears. He is my lord from Salome divorced, though her affections did to leave him grieve. Yet will she by her love to you enforce to leave the man that would your foes leave. Then haste them to their death. I will requite thee, gentle Marianne. Salome, I mean. The thought of Marianne doth so steal my spirit, my mouth and speech of her, I cannot wean. And here she comes indeed. Happily met my best and dearest heart. But what ails my dear? Thou dost the difference suddenly forget twixt dusky habits and a time so clear. My lord, I suit my garment to my mind, and there no cheerful colours can I find. Is this my welcome? Have I longed so much to see my dearest Marianne discontent? What is that is the cause I heart to touch? Or speak, that I thy sorrow may prevent? Art thou not Jury's queen and Herod's too? Be my commandress, be my sovereign guide. To be by thee directed, I will woo, for in thy pleasure lies my highest pride. 
Or if thou think she bears no bound too strict a limit for thy great command, thou shalt be empress of Arabia crowned. Thou shalt rule, and I will win the land. I'll rob the holy dead sepulchre to give thee wealth, if thou for wealth do care. Thou shalt have all they did with him in turn, and I, for thee, will make the temple bare. I neither have of power nor riches want. I have enough, nor do I ask for more. Your offers to my heart no ease can grant, except they could my brother's life restore. No. Had you wished the wretched Maria glad, or had your love to her been truly tied? Nay, had you not desired to make her sad? My brother, nor my grandsire, had not died. Wilt thou believe no oaths to clear thy lord? How oft have I with execration sworn thou art by me beloved, by me adored? Yet are my protestations heard with school. I will not speak unless to be believed. This froward humour will not do you good. It has too much already heard grief to think that you on terms of hate have stood. Yet, smile, my dearest Marianne. Do but smile, and I will all unkind conceits exile. I cannot frame disguise, nor ever taught my faith a look to so deep from my thought. By heaven, you vex me. Build not on my love. I will not build on so unstable ground. Naught is so fixed, but peevishness may move. Tis blessed the slightest cause that none were found. Be judge yourself, if ever hell sought, or would be moved a course of change to find. Yet let your look declare a marvel fault. My heart again you shall to marry and bind. How oft? Did I for you my mother chide? Revile my sister and my brother rate, and tell them all my Marianne they belied. Distrust me still in these be signs of hate. What hast thou here? A dream for curing love, the queen desired me to deliver it. Did I? So I'm hateful that is this will prove. Can it be no worse than heaven's permit? Confess the truth, thou wicked instrument to her outrageous will. Tis poison sure! Tell true! And thou shalt escape the punishment which, if thou do conceal, thou shalt endure. I know not, but I doubt it be no less. Long since the hate of you her heart did seize. Knowst thou the cause thereof? My lord, I guess Sir Hemus told the tale that did displease. Oh, God, Sir Hemus. False. Go, let him die. Stay not to suffer him to speak a word. Damn that villain. Did he falsify the oath he swore even of his own accord? <clears throat> now do I know thy falsehood, painted devil, thou white enchantress. Oh, thou art so foul that hyssop cannot claim as thee worst of evil. A beauteous body hides a loathsome soul. Your love, Sir Hemus, moved by his affection, though he hath ever heretofore been true, did fall out the sooth that I did give direction and we were put to death to slaughter you. And you, in black revenge, attended now to add a murder to your breach of vow. Is this a dream? Oh, that shall no more. I'll give my vow to who can prove it so. I would, I would like any beggar poor, so I for false mind Mary Anne did not know. Foul pith contained in the fairest rhyme that ever graced a cedar. Thy eye is pure as heaven, but impure thy mind, and for impurity shall Marianne die. Lies hid beneath thy heavenly show. Yet never wert thou chaste. 
Thou must exalt, pull down, command, forbid, and be above the wheel of fortune placed. Hadst thou complotted Herod's massacre that so thy son a monarch might be styled, not half so grievous such an action were, as once to think that Marianne is defiled. Yet must I love thee in despite of death, and thou shalt die in the despite of love. And neither shall my love prolong thy breath, nor shall thy loss of breath my love remove. I might have seen thy falsehood in thy face. Where else couldst thou get the stars that serve for eyes except by theft, and theft is foul disgrace? This had appeared before we had wise, but I am a sot, a very sot, no better. My wisdom long ago wandering fell, thy face encountering it, my wit did fetter, and made me for delight my freedom sell. Hast thou designed Sahimus to his end? I have, my lord. They do as much for Marianne. They offend, leave ill unblamed, or good without reward. Here, take her to her death. Come back, come back! What? Meant I to deprive the world of light? To muffle jury in the foulest black that ever was an opposite to white? Why? Whither would you carry her? You bade me straight conduct her to her death, my lord. Why, sure I did not! Heaven was not mad! Why should she feel the fury of the sword? Love and hate to fight, and thou hath love acquired a greater part. Yet thou hath hate, affection, conquered quite, and therefore bear her hence. And, Hebrew, why sees you with lion's claws the fairest lamb of all the flock? She must not, shall not die. Without her, I am most miserable am. With her more than most. And they will bear heads. Away! Away! But yet bear her but to prison, not to death. What? Is she gone indeed? Stay, villain, stay! Her looks alone preserved your sovereign's breath. Well, let her go, but yet she shall not die. I cannot think she meant to poison me, though with certain tears she lived too wantonly, and therefore shall she never more be free. a second time. Yet, let us resolutely yield our breath. Death is only the ladder heaven to climb. So farewell, fair city. Never more shall I see thy beauty shining bright. Farewell to Jewish men of worthy store. No farewell to any female white. You wavering crew, my curse to you I leave. You have but one to give you any grace, and you yourself shall marry Anne's life bereave. Your commonwealth doth innocently chase you creatures made to be the human curse. You tigers, lionesses, hungry bears, tear massacring hyenas. They, far worse, for they for prey do shed their feigned tears. But you all weep, you creatures, 
prostitute for your unquenched thirst of human blood. You wavering crew, souls of debate, your love today and for no other cause but yesterday you did deeply hate. You are the wreck of order, the breach of laws. Your best are foolish, fraud, wanton, vain. Your worse, murderous, adulterous, cunning, proud, and Salome attends the latter train. Or rather, she their leader is allowed. I'll do the sottishness of men the whale that do by following you enhance your pride. T'were better the human race should fail and be by such mischief multiplied. The servile curse to your sex was given because in paradise you did offend. Then do we not resist the will of heaven when on your will like servants we attend? <coughs> you are to nothing constant but to ill. You are with naught but wickedness endued. Your loves are spent on nothing but your will. And thus my censure I will conclude. You are the worst of good, the best of evil. Your best are worse than men. You are worse than devils! Let us to our death. We are not blessed. How different seals than these creatures give.
the pride and shame of Greece, Troy flaming Helen's not so fairly shined. Tis very true indeed. She lays them out for next to catch the hearts that do not shun back. Tis time to speak, for Herod sure forgets Marianne's very tresses hide deceit. Oh, do they so? Nay, then you do but well. In sooth, I thought it had been hair. Nets call you them. Lord, how they do excel. I never saw a net that showed so fair. But have you heard her speak? You know I have. And are you not amazed? No, not a whit. Then twas not her you heard. Her life I'll say for many on half the world amazed a whit. She speaks a beauteous language. But within her heart is false as powerful. And her tongue is but to lure the auditors to sin, and is the instrument to do you wrong. It may be so. Nay, it is so. She is our chest. Her mouth will over to every stranger's ear. They let the execution make haste. But she had charged him of her words to hear. Let him be dead. But she do him surprise, and shall to free her spirit be assigned. And what boots deafness, if he hath his eyes? Her murder must be both deaf and blind. For if he sees, he needs must see the stars that shine on either side of Marianne's face, whose sweet aspect will terminate the wars wherewith he should a soul so precious chase. Your thoughts do rave with doting on the queen. Her eyes are even viewed, and you'll confess, a sable star that be but seldom seen. Then speak of reason more. Oh, marry and less. Yourself are held a goodly creature here. Yet so unlike my Marianne in your shape, that when to her you have approached me, myself have overtaken you for an ape. And yet you play to beauty. Go your ways. You are to her a sunburned blackamoor. Your paintings cannot equal Marianne's praise. Her nature is so rich, you are so poor. Let her be stayed from death. For if she die, we do, we know not what to stop her breath. The world cannot another Marianne buy. Why stay you lingering? Countermand her death. Then you'll never remember what hath passed. So here, Mrs. Love, and her shall be forgot. This true indeed. She may mend that fault may be her last. <coughs> Though yet she loved you not. Oh God, it is true. Sir Hemus, earth and heaven, why did you both conspire to make me curse in cousin me with shows and proofs uneven? She showed the best, and yet did prove the worst. So what avails this shame, when the way she is deceitful, light the vanity, while she was made for nothing but a bait to trade some hapless man to misery. I am the hapless man that have betrayed to endless bondage. I will see her yet. Methinks I should discern her if she failed. Can human eyes be dazed by woman's wit? Once more these eyes of mine with her shall meet. Before the headsman do her life believe. Shall I forever part from thee, my sweet, without the taking of my latest leave? You've had a good resolve to save her now. I'll say her death is well determined, for sure she may no longer break her vow. Sir Hemus and Joseph as both are dead. She shall not leave, nor will I see her face. A long healed wound a second time doth bleed. With Joseph I remember her disgrace. A shameful end ensues a shameful deed. Oh, that I had never called to mind anew the discontent of Marianne's wavering heart. Twas you, you foul-mouthed harlot, 
None but you that did the thought hereof to me impart. Hence from my sight, my black tormentor, hence. For hadst thou not made Herod unsecure, I had not doubted Marianne's innocence, but still had held her in my heart for pure. I'll leave you to your passion. Tis no time to purge me now, though, of a guiltless crime. Destruction take thee. Thou hast made my heart as heavy as revenge. I am so dull, methinks I am not sensible or smart, though hideous horrors in my bosom pull. My head weighs downwards. Therefore will I go to try if I can sleep away my love. Oh, villain, can thy pitcher coloured soul permit thy ear to hear her cause this doom? Or can force thy tongue that tale control that must unjustly bring her to her tomb? Salome, thou hast thyself repaid for all the benefits that thou hast done. Thou art the cause I have the queen betrayed. Thou hast my heart with darkest force of one. I am condemned. Heaven gave me not my tongue to slander innocence, to lie, deceive, to be the hateful instrument to wrong, the earth of greatest glory to bereave. The thing sends and up the heaven pride is the blackest deed that ever was. And there does sit an ancient notary that does record it down in these grass. Oh, then I will quake. I kill a thou. Thou found the means thyself from shame to free. And though my soul approves that it's not well, all for a son, and I shall follow thee. preserve my breath. Aye, I it was that thought my beauty such as it alone could countermand my death. Now death will teach me. He can pale as well a cheek of roses as a cheek less bright, and dim an eye who shone doth most excel, as soon as one that casts a meaner light. Had not myself against myself conspired, no, Plot, no adversary from without, could Herod's love from Marianne have retired, or from his thoughts have thrust my semblance out. The wanton queen, that never loved for love, false Cleopatra, wholly set on game, with all her slights did try, but vainly try, for her the love of Herod to obtain. Yet her allurements, all her courtly guile, her smiles, her favours, and her smooth deceit, but not my face from Herod's mind exile, but were with him of less and little weight. The face and person of the Egyptian queen, for beauty's goddess Venus' self was tear, this face that captured Julius Caesar's fate, this very face that was Mark Antony's bane, this face that to the Egypt's pride was born, the face that all the world esteemed so rare, did Herod hate? Despise, neglect, and scorn were with the same he Mariams did compare. This made that I improvidently wrought, and on the wager even my life did fall, because I thought, and yet but truly thought, that Herod's love could not from me be drawn. But now, though out of time I plainly see it could be drawn, that never drawn from me had I but with humility been graced. As well as fair, I might have proved me wise. But I thought, because I knew me chaste, one that virtue in a woman might suffice. That might for glory of our sex might stand, wherein humility and chastity doth march with equal paces hand in hand. But chastity alone? Who set it by? And, and I had chastity. And tis my joy that I was ever innocent, though sour. And therefore can they but my life destroy. My soul is free from adversary's power. You princes great in power and high in birth, be great and high, I envy not your hap. Oh, 
Your birth must be from dust. Your power on earth. In heaven shall Mariam sit in sorrow's lap. Oh, heaven! Your beauty cannot bring you thither. Your soul is black and spotted, full of sin. You in adultery live nine years together, and heaven will never let adultery in. What art thou that does the poor Mariam pursue? Some spirit sent to drive me to despair? Who says for truth that Mariam is untrue? If fair she be, she is as chaste as fair. I am that Doris that was once beloved, beloved by Herod, Herod's lawful wife. It was you that Doris from his side removed and robbed from me the glory of my life. Was that adultery? Did not Moses say that he that being matched did deadly hate might by permission put his wife away and take a more beloved to be his mate? What did he hate me for? For simple truth? For bringing beauteous babes for love to him? For riches? Noble birth? Or tender youth? Or for no stain did Doris's honour dim? Oh, tell me, Marianne, tell me if you know which fault of these made Herod Doris's foe. These thrice three years of I with hands held up and bowed knees fast nailed to the ground besought for thee the dregs of that same cup that cup of wrath that is for sinners found. And now thou art to drink it. Doris's curse upon thyself did all this while attend, but now it shall pursue thy children worse. O oh, Doris, now to thee my knees I bend. This heart that never bowed to thee doth bow. Cause not my infants, let it thee suffice that heaven doth punishment to me allow. Thy curse is caused that guiltless Marianne dies. Had I ten thousand tongues and every tongue inflamed with poison's power and steeped in gore, my curses would not answer for my wrong, though I in cursing thee employed the more. Hear thou that didst not garrison command to be a place where wrong with cause to curse. Stretch thy revenging arm, thrust forth thy hand, and play for the mother much, the children worse. Throw flaming fire upon the base-born heads that were begotten in unlawful beds. But let them live till they have sense to know what is to be in the miserable state. Be their nearest friends their overthrow, attended be they by suspicious hate. And Marianne, I do hope a son of mine shall one day come to be the death of thine. Young. Yet I, methinks, have known thee too, too long. The fairest action of our human life is scorning to revenge an injury. For who forgives without a further strife? His adversary's heart to him doth tie. And tis a firmer conquest truly said, to win the heart than overthrow the head. If we a worthy enemy do find, to yield to worth, it must be nobly done. But if a baser match would be his mind, in base revenge there is no honour one. Who would a worthy courage overthrow, and who would wrestle with a worthless foe? We say our hearts are great and cannot yield. Because they cannot yield, it proves them poor. Great hearts are tasked beyond their power, but self. The weakest lion will the loudest roar. Truth school for certain does this same allow. My heartedness doth sometimes teach to bow. A noble heart doth teach a virtuous scorn, to scorn to owe a duty over long, to scorn to be for benefits or all, to scorn to lie, to scorn to do a wrong, to scorn to bear an injury in mind, to scorn
scorn of freeborn hearts, slave-like to bind. But if for wrongs we needs revenge must have, then be our vengeance of the noblest kind. Do we his body from our fury save, and let our hate prevail against our mind? What can against him a greater vengeance be, and make his foe more worthy far than he? to leave a Jew unpaid. She would to Herod then have paid her love, and not have been by sullen passion swayed. To fix her thought all injury above his virtuous pride. Had Mariam thus been proved, long famous life to her had been allowed. When, sweet queen, did I so far offend your heavenly self that you, my fault to quit, have made me now relater of your end? The end of beauty, chastity, and wit, which none so hapless in the fatal place but I most wretched for the queen to choose? It is true I have some ill boding face that make me call to tell this luckless news, and yet no news to Herod. For it knew to him, and happy that not been at all. Yet do I long to come within his view, that he may know his wife did get this for. And here he comes. Your Marianne greets you well. What? Lives my Marianne? Joy, exceeding joy, she shall not die. Heaven doth your will repel. And do not with thy words my life destroy. I prithee, tell no dying tale. Thine eye without thy tongue doth tell but too, too much. Yet let thy tongue's addition make me die. Death welcome comes to him whose grief is such. I went amongst the curious gazing troop to see the last of her that was the best. To see if death had had to make a stoop, to see the sun and Mary in Phoenix's nest. And there I came. Upon the way I saw the stately Mary, I'm not debated by fear. Her look did seem to keep the worldly oh, yet my her own face this fortune bear. And dost you serve my, my light? My tongue was fain to be the instrument of Mary Ann's praise. Let's speak. She cannot be too often famed, all tongues suffice not her sweet name to raise. But as she came, she Alexandra met. Would it her death, sweet queen, no wit be well? But as if nature she did quite forget, she did upon her daughter allow you, right? Why stopped you not her mouth? Where had she words to darken that that heaven made so bright? Our sacred tongue no epithet affords to call her other than the world's delight. She told her that her death was too, too good, and that already she'd lived too long. She said she's shamed to have a part in blood of her that did a princely hammer wrong. Base, pig fat devil, shame. It was all her glory that she, to noble Marianne, was the mother. It never shall you live in any story. Her name except to infamy, I'll smother. What answer did her princely daughter make? She made no answer. She looked at the wife as if thereof she scarce did notice, eh? Yet smiled, a dutiful, most scornful smile. Oh, sweet creature, I that look to mine do call. Full oft have heaven been amazed with all. Go on. She came and moved with pleasant grace. As if to triumph her rival were, in stately habit and with cheerful face, yet every eye was moist, but Marian was there. When justly opposite to me she came, she picked me up from all the crew. She beckoned to me, called me by my name, but she my name, my birth and fortune knew. What? Did she name thee? Happy, happy man. 
For that I'll ever love that name the better. But what sweet tune did this fair dying swan afford thine in it? Tell all, omit no letter. Tell thou my lord, said me. she. Meant she me. It's true. The more my shame, I was her lord. Were I not mad, her lord I still should be. But now her name must be by me adored. I'll say, what said she more? Each word she said shall be the food whereon my heart is fed. Tell thou, my lord, that sauce to me lose my breath. That I could that sentence now control, if guiltily eternal be my death. I hold her chaste, even in my inmost soul. By three days hence, if wishes could revive, I know himself would make me off to lie. Three days, three hours, three minutes, not so much. A minute in a thousand parts divided. My penitency for her death is such as in the first. I wish she had not died. But forward in my turn. Why am she went and perhaps if she some silent prayer and said she did as if to die she were content. And thus to heaven where heavenly soul is fled. But art thou sure there doth no life remain? It's possible my Mariam should be dead. Is there no trick to make her breathe again? Her body is divided from her head. But yet he thinks there may be found by art strange ways of cure. Tis sure, rare things are done by an inventive head and willing heart. Let not my lord and fences idly run. Tis as possible it should be seen that we should make the holy Abraham leave, though in two, two thousand years have been as breath again to slaughtered my young gift. But now for more assaults, prepare your ears. There cannot be a further cause of moan. This accident shall shelter me from fears. What can I fear? The wedding marriage was gone. I'll tell you what you will. As I came by from my young's death, I saw upon a tree a man that to his neck a cord did tie, which cord did design his end to be. When me he once discerned, he downwards bowed, and thus with fearful voice he cried aloud, Go, tell the king he trusted ere he tried, I am the cause that Mariam Corsus died. Take him, for it was the slave that said she meant with poison's deadly force to end my life, that she the crown might have, which tale did Mariam from her life divorce. Oh, pardon me, thou pure, unspotted ghost. My punishment must need sufficient be in missing that content I value most, which was thy admirable face to see. I had but one inestimable jewel, yet one I had, no monarch had the like, and therefore may I curse myself as cruel, which was broken by a blow myself did strike. She was my graceful moiety, me a curse to slay my better half and save my worst. But sure she is not dead. You did but jest to put me in perplexity a while. To a well indeed if I could so be dressed. I see she is alive, methinks you smile. If saying today will yet deceased that be, tis as certain Mariam is as dead as he. Why then go call her to me now. Bid her put on fair habit, stately ornament, and let no frown no shade her smoothest brow. In her doth heaven place his whole content. She'll come in stately weeks to please your sense, if now she come attired in robe of heaven. Remember, you yourself did send her hands, and now to you she can no more be given. She's dead. Hell take her murder, she was fair. Oh, what a hand she had. It was so 
so white it did the whiteness of the snow impair. I never more shall see so sweet a sight. It is true. Her hair was red. Her hand. Her hands. She had not singly one of beauty there, but such a pair as here, where heaven stands, he dares the world to make to both compare. Thy cursed sound me. Hadst thou been still, my Mariam had been breathing by my side. Oh, never had I, had I had my will, set forth command that Mariam should have died. But suddenly, thou didst with envy vex to see thyself outmatched in thy sex. Upon thy sex's forehead, Mariam sat to grace you all like an imperial crown. But you, fond fool, hath rudely pushed there out and proudly pulled your proper glory down. One smile of hers, nay, not so much a look, was worth a hundred thousand such as you. How can her eye be made by death obscure? I cannot think that it must sparkle still. Foul sacrilege to rob those lights so pure from out a temple made by heavenly skill. I am the villain that has done the deed, the cruel deed, though by another's hand. My word, though not my sword, made Marianne bleed. He came as his grandchild, died at my command. That Marianne that I once did love so dear, the partner of my now detested bed. Why shine you, son, with an aspect so clear? I tell you once again, my Marianne's dead. You could but shine if some Egyptian blouse or Ethiopian down you lives her life. This was then, wherefore bend you not your brows? The king of Jury's fair and spotless wife. Deny thy beams, and moon refuse thy light. Let all the stars be dark, let Jury lie, no more distinguish which is day and night since her best birth did her bosom die. I'll muffle up myself in endless night, and never let mine eyes behold the light. Retire thyself, vile monster, worse than he that stained the virgin earth with mother's blood. Still, in some vault or den enclosed be, where with thy tears thou mayst be left the blood, which blood in time may drown me. Happy day, when thou at blood shalt die of pride and rage. A stone upon the tomb someone shall lay, and these shall be the word it shall contain. Here Herod lies, that hath his Marianne.
strange events of his wandering the day. How many were deceived? How many died? At once today, he ran to safety in it. Before from there, all certainty bereaved since twice six hours, so many can deceive. This morning was Herod held for sure the dead, and all the Jews on Mariamde attended. Pastor Boris rose from Salome's bed, and neither dreamed of any boss or end. For Rora's joy that he might have his wife, and Baba's son for safety of his life. Tonight our Herod does at life remain. The guiltless Marianne is deprived of breath. Stout Pastor Boris, both divorced and slain. Valiant son of Babas has his death. For Rora's would of his love have been bereft, his Salome her suit unlaid her. Herod this morning did expect with joy to see his Marianne's not to be of the face. And yet at night he did her life destroy, and surely thought she did her name disgrace. Yet now again, so short to hue his lost, he both repents her death and knows her chaste. Had he with wisdom now her death delayed, he at his pleasure might command her death. But now he hath his power so much betrayed as all his woes cannot restore her breath. Now does he strangely lunatically rave because he's Marianne's life he cannot save. This day's events were certainly ordained to be the warning to posterity. So many changes are therein contained, so admirably strange variety. This day alone, all sages Hebrews shall in after times, <coughs> all of wisdom and 